Welcome to World Changers Church. We're excited that you're here. When you stepped through our doors, you didn't just walk into a building. You walked into a family. And no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you look like, you're welcome here. We believe that God is love and that His grace rekindles lost passions, repairs broken dreams, and fills empty lives. We believe that a life in Christ is not a formula of rules and laws, but a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with Jesus. His love for you is infinite and everlasting, without pretense, conditions, or discrimination. We can't stand religion, but we love God. And if you're not sure what the difference is yet, we can't wait to show you. So, let's get started. Welcome to World Changers Church. People like you change the world. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bible study tonight here at World Changers Church Charlotte. Thank you all so much for joining us here this evening. I'm excited, praise God, as always, to get in the Word with you, to break the Word down, man, and be able to apply it to our lives uh, in, 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 in all of its simplicity. Praise God. So let us go ahead and begin with prayer. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this gathering. Lord, we Thank you, Father, that we have understanding of your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you, you're you giving us wisdom to break your word down and, and apply it to our everyday lives. And, Father, we thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, that you're opening our eyes to things that we haven't seen before in our ears. Father God, that we have things that we have not heard from you before, and we thank you for it now. We declare it, it is well, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, and all those agree, said amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone, once again. Thank you all uh, for being here tonight. Uh, man, it's it's going to be good. Tonight we're going to begin a, a, a new series, and and it's called What the Blood of Jesus Has Accomplished. Uh, what has the blood of Jesus accomplished? And, and the reason why it's that title, because I began to understand that as we were teaching, as we have been teaching the grace of God and, how, and relying on the finished works of Jesus Christ, and man, if I'm, if I'm new, in the body of Christ, or have not heard this message of grace of Christ, I, I would be lost to not really understand what is the finished works of Jesus Christ. What do you mean rely on the finished works of Christ? Uh, what do you mean that when I step outside of the finished works of Christ, I'm trying to, I'm in performance and I'm in work. I wouldn't understand that. So I wanted to, the, really the spirit of God put on my heart to just break it down, break it down so that you can uh, understand and know what has the blood of Jesus finished what has the blood of Jesus accomplished in our lives so that you can understand it listen unbelief can come through a lot of different avenues the enemy is obviously the main avenue but there's also ignorance when you just don't know and then unbelief can come in because of ignorance because you don't know and so you find it hard to believe uh some of the th some of the things that we're saying where the finished works of Jesus Christ is concerned so I wanted to just take the time uh over the next I don't know however long it takes us to finish this series, but man, just buckle up. I want you to invite someone to service tonight. I believe that, especially for those that are new in the body of Christ, or 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 they, you know, they may not necessarily be connected anywhere. But I believe it's vital for them to understand the the finished work of Jesus and what did His blood accomplish? Because at the end of the day, it's His blood that has given us everything that we need pertain that pertains to life and godliness. So we want to know. Uh, what has the blood of Christ accomplished in our lives? Amen. Praise God. Let us get started. I won't be with you long tonight. I wanted to just give you, give you a little, little bit, little pieces here and there. You know, as we preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus, man. How many of you know? We also want to know what the blood of Jesus uh, made available. We know what the birth uh, ushered in. Praise God, and we celebrate the birth of our Savior. But we also want to know how does his birth and the blood, how does it tie in together? And so I'm, I'm excited to kind of begin this series on this week as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 20 through 21. We're going to begin there. And I want to begin there because it, it really gives us a, a picture of when Christ was announced and he was coming. The angel announced 
is coming and it gives us a picture of what his mission will be. You know, most of the time when we think of Jesus and when we hear about Christ, uh, if you don't know what he, what all he has finished, you think of immediately salvation, which is great because that is what he ushered in and what he's made available. Uh, but he's done so much more than that. And as a matter of fact, I would dare to say that what he finished on the cross has more to do with how we live on this earth as it prepares us for the transition. And I believe that. I believe that 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 the majority of what Jesus has finished and what his blood has paid for prepares us more so to living on the earth. And yet not many Christians know how to do that. And we we tend to struggle where finding the, the balance of of understanding scriptures and balancing it with our everyday lives. We're trying to figure out, you know, what all applies to my everyday life. What, a what, a what an amount of it just applies to, um, you know, the old covenant and the new covenant. So um, my prayer is that you get understanding tonight and you become confident in what Jesus has paid for. So, uh, true right believing can really begin to settle in to your heart. When you can, when you know a thing, when you, when you know it, then right believing can come in behind it. And then with right believing what Jesus said, all things are possible to those who do what? Believe, praise God. So you just by you believing right, glory to God, there's going to be some things that are <laughs> be manifesting in your life just because understanding of God's word came in and you could believe right. Praise God. You can believe right. Amen. How many of you all want to believe right tonight? Glory to God. Matthew 1 uh, verse 20 through 21. Praise God. It says, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus and here's his mission, for he will save his people from their sins. So not only did the angel announce that this is this this birth is of the Holy Spirit, but he's also announced what Jesus will come to do, what he will set forward. Now, how many of you know that the the Jesus saving us from our sins didn't happen at the birth of Christ, but it happened when he shed his blood. It, it didn't happen when he was born, but the, the angel was announcing what would the end from the beginning. Bro, glory to God. I believe God is going to begin to announce some things in your life. And he's going to begin to show you the end of the thing uh, from the beginning. Praise God. And, and that's just what the angel did. He announced the end of Christ, uh, his life on the earth uh, from the beginning. Praise God. And so it prepares us to understand what did Jesus come to do? What is his blood? What did he uh, what was his assignment for? And I can tell you one of the main areas is saving us from our sins. That's going to be number one. Jesus came and so his blood took our sins away. His blood took our sins away. And I want to show you that we're going to tonight's really about breaking down the scripture. It's not, it's, I'm going to just show you to you in the word because the word begins to, what happens is when I show you in the word, the spirit of God opens your understanding. He opens your, it's the word that opens our understanding. It's not our ability to comprehend a thing, but it's the word that opens our understanding. And once you can understand right, you can believe right. And then things begin to change in your life once you can believe. So I want to make sure that I show it to you in the scriptures and you can begin to lay hold of what the word say. Not what Pastor Melvin says, but what does the word of God say? Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 Verse 15, we're going to we're gonna begin there, but we're going to read a good bit of this. We're going to go actually go down to verse 28. So just make sure you get your notepads and you're taking notes. You're listening to not only me, what I'm telling you, but you're listening. What is the spirit of God putting on your heart? What is he showing you concerning what you're being ministered? Uh, I believe that when the word is really preached, the gospel of grace is preached. The spirit of God is in the midst of that man. And he's 
he's moving in the hearts and he's opening our eyes and he's showing us things that we didn't hear before. It may not even pertain to what's being specifically taught, but I believe just the spirit of God is when the gospel is going forward, the spirit of God is, is really involved, man, in, in, our ch in changing us and showing us things to come. And so be careful what you hear tonight. Not be careful in a bad way. Be careful in a good way. What will the spirit of God say to you tonight while you sitting there minding your own business, <laughs> listening to the gospel? Amen. Uh, Hebrews 9, uh, 15. We're going to go down to verse 28. We're going to look here at the blood and how does the blood of Jesus impact our lives today? What did the blood of Jesus do that nothing else could do? And that's take away the sins of men. Uh, Hebrews 9, 15, we're going to begin in verse 15. It says, and for this reason, and for this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant by means of death. By me, he's the mediator of the new covenant by means of not his birth, but his death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal e inheritance. So Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant by means of his death or by means of the shedding of his blood for the redemption of, of the transgressions under the, under the first covenant. So Jesus came to deal with the sins and the transgressions against God that were under the first covenant while introducing and initiating the second covenant. Verse 16, for where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So in order for this covenant to begin, in order for the second covenant to begin, there had to be the death of the testator. And that's the one in whom the, 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 the covenant was made with. And so by his death, he initiated the second covenant. Verse 17. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. For not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. So even the first covenant was not was not basically the blood uh, was dedicated. The first covenant was dedicated with blood, but it was the blood of animals, not Christ. Verse nineteen. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Now, this is, this is painting a picture of Moses and how Moses uh, dealt with the first covenant. And, and okay, let's keep, let's keep going. Verse 21, it says, then likewise, he sprinkled with blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So according to the law, all things are purified. All things are purified according to the law of Moses with blood. And without the shedding of the blood of an animal, there was no remission of sin. So they had to, the, 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 the sacrifice of animals, of goats, of calves, that with the sacrifice of animals and the shedding of blood, then the remission of sin was in place. Verse 23. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the, the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Praise God. Not, with, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another, then he then would have to have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. 
But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, praise God. So Christ has put away sin because of his blood, because of his shedding of his blood and the sacrifice of himself. He has done away with sin. Somebody say he's done away with sin. Praise God. Let's look at verse 27. And it says, and it has, and as it, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time. Praise, but check this out. Apart from sin for salvation. Praise God. So Christ is he said he's appearing a second time, but he's not dealing with it was not he's not dealing with sin. He's not dealing with sin. Why? Because he died once for all. He died for the sins of many. Praise God. He's died for the sins of the world. So he's he listen, when he did it one time, he doesn't need to go back up on the cross. Somebody say, Well, if he died on the cross for sins and it's so much sinning still taking place, did Jesus fulfill what he came to do? He absolutely did. He died to deal with the sin nature, praise God. But those that believe in him, the sin nature is no longer dominant in our lives. We are no longer slaves to the sin nature. Why? Because we have a new nature on the inside of us that was initiated and, and, and put in place by the death of Jesus Christ. Now, he has, he has died for the whole world, for the sins of the world. But those that reject him, are really what they're saying is I can pay off my own sins by doing good deeds and I can do right by people or, you know, I can live life where I'm not, you know, I'm not harming people. I'm not robbing people. I'm not do doing all these other things that other people go out and do. So now they're, they decide I'm going to live a self-righteous life because I'm going to be the one that measures my life and measures whether or not I'm sinning or not. But those that go to hell don't go to hell for bad behavior. They go to hell because they rejected the sin offering of the son of God, Jesus Christ. And so therefore, it is only by his blood that my sins and sin nature have been taken care of. Praise God. I mean, past, present, and future. God saw this thing from the, from the beginning. He saw the end. So therefore, he says he already had a a perfect sacrifice in his son that would take care of the issue of sin. Praise God. Sin is no longer an issue with God. It is not. It's an issue with us because we tend to forget the sacrifice. Jesus is a perfect sacrifice. And so while we, while we so focus on trying to, to do right and to live right for God, we forget that he already put something in place that all we have to do is believe and therefore, by believing, he purifies us, man. He, he He's taking away that sin nature. Praise If you're not born again, you're struggling with sin, and you're struggling with being a slave. The Bible says a slave to sin. That means that you're a slave to the, the sin nature that we were all born with because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Therefore, every man that was born from their lineage were born sinners, not because they sinned, but because they had the nature of sin. So therefore, the only way to deal with when a man has the nature of sin in them, they're going to be dominated by their sin nature. And the only way to deal with that sin nature, God says, I have to have a perfect sacrifice. They can call, give a new birth. Praise God. They can call it a new birth because I got to get a new nature. And then that's why they call it the, the born again. That's why they call it the born again experience because it's not just an emotional plea. Uh, that you said at the altar, but it's a rebirth, praise God. You are a new creation created in Christ Jesus because his blood has made a new nature available and his blood has defeated sin. Therefore, no longer live your lives as believers saying that the devil is busy in your life. Why? Because he can't be. Glory to God. He, he don't have a nature to work with in you anymore. Why? Because he, you, you have a the nature of God. You have a born again nature, uh, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the blood, man. His blood has taken away. Not it didn't cover our sins. You know, see, some people will will make it seem as though his blood covers the sin, and then we have to work off the rest. No, his blood has taken away the sin nature and it's washed. Praise God, it's washed us 
It's make, it makes sure that the residue, glory to God, of sin is, is, is removed in the life of a believer. Man, that's, man, Pastor, I get it, but that's hard to believe. Because there's so many people that say they're Christian and they're, man, they're doing more sinning than the people who reject Jesus. <laughs> well, I tell you why sin is, why sin is so dominant, still dominating in the life of so many uh, Christians. And it's because they don't believe in the perfect sacrifice. They don't believe uh, in what Jesus has done. And so therefore they are, there's, they're, they confess Jesus as Lord, but they're living a life according to the law. And see, the, the, the law only stirs up sin. It only stirs sin up and it only the law was given to show us that we could not measure up to God. The law with the law of Moses was given to show us that we needed a savior. So what happens is a Christian that's being dominated by sin. It's not that they didn't confess Christ, but what happened is they 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 confess Jesus and now they're living a life according to the law. Well, you know, the only problem with that is that Jesus, God's not accepting folks who are trying to be right with him through the law. He's not, he's not accepting you because you, you're trying to be righteous on your own ability, on your own effort. You're trying to do right to be right with God. He wants the person that say, Lord, I can't do it. I need Jesus to do everything on the inside of me. I can't kick this. You can't kick this smoking habit. You need Jesus to move in to remove the desires. Do you see how just something like that, you can take that and say, well, I'm, you know, I'm on a, I'm trying to do my best the best I can to kick this smoking habit or, or drinking habit or, or, you know, cussing habit or whatever you have or, or stealing, you know, whatever, have, whatever it is, is developing your life. It's so simple, you know, to take one area of your life and say, you know what? I got to do better. I have to do better. I can't cuss. I can't cuss like that anymore. I can't go on a job interview cussing in front of my, in my interview. I got to do better. So now you take that. I got to do better mentality and instead of relying on what Christ finished and what his blood made available. And a lot of it has to do, you just don't know. So now I want to teach you so you'll know you don't have to. Listen, there is help for your addiction. Glory to God. And his help is present. He's the very present help in the time of trouble. And an addiction that's destroying your life is a time of trouble. Praise God. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to receive the new nature. Praise God. I believe Jesus is enough to reverse our age. Man, I believe Jesus is enough to reverse our, 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 our health. I believe that, man. I, I believe that. I told, I've told you all that before, man. What happens to a person when they believe Jesus really lives in them? There is there's so much change and shift on how you treat yourself, the things you put in your body, what you see as, as, as important and, and, and beneficial for your body. You observe all of that, not because you're trying to please men, but because you believe there's a Christ in you and he is now altering your decisions. Praise God, man. This is, this is just the first few minutes and I ain't even went over, but a few scriptures and we're already kind of diving in, man, on the importance of knowing the blood of Jesus. Without the blood, you are still left to pay for your sins. Without the blood, I'm still left to pay for my sins. And I don't know, I don't know about you, but I don't have enough good deeds in me to pay for the sins. And I'm not talking about just the ones you commit. I'm talking about the ones you think about. The ones you the ones you 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 thought about. I'm, those are sins as well. If you think about cutting somebody cuz they cut you off in traffic, man that's a sin. <laughs> if you think about stealing from somebody because they got something better than you, that's a sin. If you think about uh taking a grocery cart that's left on the aisle with two items in it because you don't see them around, man that's stealing. <laughs> Listen, you can't do it on your own. You can't, you can't do it. That's why the blood, you got to know what the blood has paid for because God didn't intend for us to live uh, this Christian life by ourselves. Amen. He intended on us to live it with him. He intends on for us to live it with him through the son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I know I've said a mouthful, praise God. We could almost go home there. Just, just understanding the, the initial sacrifice, man sacrifice when you believe the sacrifice it changes it changes you man when you believe that jesus was sacrificed he sacrificed himself it begins to change you man you begin to you begin to realize and value christ not just as a uh you know what you may have thought as a religious story and and man you know i i, I love the thing about christ on christmas nah, man it's i need him in my everyday life 
I'm so grateful, praise God, that he sacrificed himself for me. He wasn't forced to do it. God didn't force him to do it. He chose to come and do it himself. And therefore, man, I'm so grateful for what he's done. And I can't go a day without saying, Lord, I just thank you for Jesus. I thank you for your son. And I know that he didn't have to do it for me. I know he didn't have to, he, had, he didn't have to die and shed his blood for me, but he chose to. Man, this ought to move you into a place of just worship, man. When you just think about the blood, when you think about the shedding of his blood and what all it initiated when the blood was shed, man, it ought to move you to a place of thanksgiving. It ought to move you to a place of, Lord, I, I want to know you more because I, I believe that this love is so powerful that it can change me. It can cause me to love even my worst enemies because of the blood. Somebody say, because of the blood. Man, I want you to just type it in. I want, you, I want that to see on everybody's timeline, man, because of the blood of Jesus, man. Because of the blood of Jesus, I'm made whole. Uh, because of the blood of Jesus, I am a new creation, a sinless Christian. Man, that's, <laughs> I know, that's, that's challenging. Praise God, that's challenging. Why can I say that? Because he, he took away it. He took away it. See, you're, you're trying to measure my performance. You're trying to measure your performance. You say, well, what about your thoughts? What about this? What about that? I'm trying to tell you that he took away the sin nature. He took away the sin nature that produced sinning. So therefore, he created a new creation in him. Praise God. I don't, I don't know about you, but that's my confession. Lord, I thank you. I am a new creation, a sinless believer. Praise God. I don't, I'm not saying it to get your approval. I'm not saying to get anybody's approval. I'm thanking God for who he made me. And nor am I taking that and measuring someone else's performance. See, when you when you do that and you say that, you begin to, you have to be careful that you're not measuring that against someone else's behavior. Say, well, I'm a sinless Christian. Well, you're obviously not because you're, you're out clubbing. Well, you may have thought about going with them. <laughs> but praise God. It's, it's the spirit of God in you that, that says, you know what? Man, I'm so grateful for what Jesus has done. There is no way I'm going back to what I used to do. Not because of self-will, but because I, I'm so grateful for what he has sacrificed for me, the shedding of his blood. There is no way I'm desiring to go back to where I came from. Amen. Praise God. We're we going to get there. I know I got some stuff to cover, but I'm just excited about the blood. And uh, I'm just grateful for what all God is saying in this time. Let's look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. I know if, if I'm talking too quick, just say something. Just type it in and say, Pastor, make it plain. <laughs> just just say something like that so I know you. So I know you, you, you know, I'm not talking too fast. But man, as you can tell, I, I said I was just going to go by the scriptures. But when the blood, when I'm just thinking about the blood of Jesus and what it has accomplished for me, for me, for you. It's what he's accomplished for us, for the world. And we just need to get the world to believe it. Those that are in the world, we need them to believe that the blood of Jesus is for them, man. Not because you're a part of, uh, you know, a church or, or you, you know, you're trying to do right now, man. He sacrificed way before any of us ever attended our first church service. Amen. He did it. He did it while we were yet sinners and we were enemies to God. Amen. Man, he did it while we were enemies. Praise God. He did it while we were enemies. We see that he he died for he shed his blood for you. And I, when we were yet enemies to God, not we didn't know him, not we were enemies to God. But yet he said, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Because I, I, I so he so believed that the blood can change a man. Glory to God. Man, he so believed that the blood can change us and change our hearts and take us from enemies to children. He so believed in the power that was invested in him. He said, I'll do it. I'll do it, praise God. And I know that out of this seed, which is him going into the ground and being raised, he said, many will be raised with me out of the seed that's being planted in you. Praise God. I believe that the harvest is now coming. The harvest of Christ in you is now taking you to new heights, is now changing you. And others are beginning to look at you differently because they're, they're not just seeing you anymore. They're seeing a Christ that is resurrected on the inside of you. And now they're saying, my God, what has changed? 
something has bloomed on the inside of you. You are you you're glowing. No one no no one recognizes you, and it's because the seed is now harvesting. Praise God. I believe that now. You stay encouraged, man. I don't care how long it took for the seed to grow and the harvest to come. Praise God. Seed time and harvest, as long as the earth remains, will not cease. Praise God. And I believe that. I believe that 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 those of you that have been struggling to identify Christ in you, and you said you you said the prayer, you studied the word, but you have yet to see the harvest of Christ. Man, listen, seed. Time and harvest will not cease. And I believe that your harvest time is here. Your harvest time is here. It is now. And Christ is harvesting on the inside of us like never before. Man, I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, man, so much has been opening to us. Our eyes have been open, man. We've been prospering like never before. I mean, increasing left and right. And we don't know which way it's coming in from one day to the next. We just we just thank God and we, we're we doing what he's called us to do, man. And we're going to preach the gospel and tell the world that there's some blood that has been shed and poured out for you. And all you got to do is believe in the blood of Christ. Praise God. And you too can live in the midst of a pandemic, still rejoicing, still telling others, listen, don't. Don't let this thing destroy you. There's some blood that has already been shed f- so that you can prosper and win in times like this. Man, This, listen, I don't care what point they come to Christ in. I don't care if they come to him in the midst of a pandemic. I know his blood is strong enough to, to, to wipe away their sins. That's his blood, man. It's his blood. Praise God. It's the blood of Jesus. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 28. Man. Uh, for this is my blood of the new covenant, <laughs> which was shed, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So Jesus said, "This blood, my blood, not just any blood, not the blood of an animal or a goat or a bull, but the blood. This blood is the new covenant, man. This blood is the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission." or the removal of sin. Amen. He shed it for many, even before you decided to receive it. He shed it. That's why it's so powerful. His blood is so powerful. That's why so much was invested in the blood because it, it, it can change a man. It can change it. When I say man, I mean, obviously woman, man, man, and gen, not man and gender, but it can change a person from the inside out. Praise God. His blood is strong enough to change us. His blood, when it's when it's planted, when Christ is planted in us, man, it's the blood of Christ that begins to change us and shape us, man, and shows us, and we have such a great appreciation for what He's done when that blood is just put on the inside of us, man, and He shed His blood for us. Praise God! He shed His blood. He shed His blood. It's His blood. It's the blood. Glory to God! It's the blood, man. Somebody say it's the blood of Jesus that can take your enemy and make him your biggest supporter. Praise God. It's when they it's when they realize that you've shown them someone who loves them unconditionally, even on their worst day, that they say, man, I, you know what? I, I'm so grateful that you've shown me this person, Christ. And man, I'm so I'm blown away by his love. And that he's loved me even in spite of when I made my worst decisions in life. But who does that? I tell you who does that. Jesus Christ. It's it's him. It's him. You're not always going to get this thing right. I'm not always going to get this thing right. But it's his, his, it does not devalue his blood when you make a mistake. His blood is still as powerful on the inside of you as it was when he shed it on the cross. Glory to God. It's as powerful and it's still working mightily. In your body. Amen. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Praise God. It's the blood that has taken away our sin nature. He's taken his blood, has taken away our sin nature, and our sin nature is actually responsible for producing sinning. That's why we say there is no way you should remain the same if Christ has moved in. There's no way you should be dominated by sin nature and say, I can't just get over this. I, this the sin nature 
this keeps dominating me. I keep going back to the same sin and can't keep going back to the same sin. We have to ask the question, did you receive the person of Christ? Did you receive the person of Christ? First Peter chapter two, verse 24. It says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Praise God. You were, somebody said, I were healed. You were healed by his the stripes on his body. By his stripes, you were healed. The doctor diagnoses you with sickness. You were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Praise God. You had, we had died to sin. You no longer live to it. You no longer live to the sin nature no longer. You live to righteousness. You live to this right nature, this right un, this right relationship with God. You really, you live to him. Praise God. You live unto this righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Let's go over to uh, chapter 3, verse 18 through 22. 1 first, first Peter chapter 3, verse 18 uh, to verse 22. Praise God. I know some of y'all saying, man, this is supposed to be Bible study. This is like, <laughs> this is like Sunday morning. Man, it's just the it's the blood, man. It's the blood. I'm, I just, man, it's so powerful. Uh, for It says, for Christ also suffered once for sin. How many times? Once. He suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. <laughs> My God, the blood that he shed brings us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. By whom also, check this out. This is so powerful. It says, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. My God, Jesus didn't just go to hell. He didn't just go to hell. This is for the simple fact of saying he went. He went for people. Praise God. He went to preach to the spirits that were in prison. Praise God. Man, I'm telling you, this love, this love, this ought to, this ought to lead you to worship, man, because you're so blown away by the love of God that he would not only shed his blood for those that would reject him and those that would receive him, but he went to, when he went to hell, he went to preach to tell them about this love, praise God. He went to preach and tell them about this good news that, my God, why, why would he preach? I, I wonder why would he preach? to the people that were in hell before he came. You got to remember, there were people who died who had not yet had the opportunity to believe. So he went to hell, preached to the spirits that were in prison. And, and if you notice, when Jesus was raised from the dead, they said there were people that were raised as well. Praise God. I believe they had the opportunity to hear this good news and to accept this good news and praise God, they were raised from the dead when Jesus was raised from the dead. My God, that is the love of God that he would even go and get somebody that had already died. Somebody said, well, can you do that now? No, because Jesus has already come. Now, now it's just, will you believe while you're in the land of the living? Praise God. But those that he went to preach had not yet seen the son, had not yet had the opportunity to believe the good news of Christ. But he went and preached anyway. Glory to God, man. Let's let's keep going. I could be there all night, man. <laughs> Praise God. It says, but he went and preached the uh, previous scripture. He went and preached to the spirits who were in prison. Verse twenty, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this baptism is talking about the, the baptism uh, of Christ's blood, man, the baptism in Christ. Uh, verse 22, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Praise God. So it is Christ. It's Christ that, that when he shed his blood, 
He shed his blood, and when we believe that, man, it's it's the baptism that comes through Christ, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, man, that has washed us and that saves us. That's why it pointed to when the, the eight souls that were saved in the ark, in Noah's ark, uh, it references the, the salvation that comes through the, the blood of Jesus that washes us. Just like it, they were saved by water, man, when Jesus moves in and he washes us, that's what saves us. Amen. That's what saves us. Now, the water baptism, I know there may have been others that say, you know, well, the water baptism is is the uh, thing that saves us. No, it's the water baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision of receiving Christ. It's It shows the body of Christ. Listen, I've received Christ. And as a result, the water baptism uh, is is a response, is a outward reflection of an inward change. Amen. Let's look at. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 uh, through 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 26. Amen. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, which leads me into our next point of what the blood has accomplished, and he sanctifies us. The blood of Jesus sanctifies us. Uh, the, it's washing. It, his blood washes us from the inside out. Man, that's why his blood is so powerful, because it washes us, and it makes us new. It makes us whole. It makes us new. Praise God. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 3, uh, 3 through verse 7. His blood has sanctified us. That's our next point. First one is he, he took his blood takes away our sin. Next, next point is he sanctifies us. He sanctifies us by his blood. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through 7. It says, for this is the will of God. It said, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you, should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we are. We also forewarn you and testify. Verse 7. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, uncleanness, but in holiness. So it's the will of God that we would possess and take hold of what the sanctification, which is to receive Christ. It's Christ that sanctifies us. It's not our ability to clean ourselves up and, and make ourselves like new before God on the outside. But it's Christ that works on the inside, his blood that washes us. That's the will of God that we will receive Christ, the sanctification that makes us, check this out, holy. It's Christ, it's the sanctification that the blood of Jesus accomplishes on the inside of us that makes us holy. And holiness is to be separated, to be set apart for God's use. You can't earn that holiness. You can't earn holiness. You can't make yourself ready for God's use. And do you know how many people, how many believers live life trying to make themselves available and, and uh, uh, clean themselves up for God to use? No, it's the blood of Christ that sanctifies us, that prepares us and makes us ready to be used by God. And this happens supernaturally. Somebody said, how, how can you say it? it's the blood of Christ that will come in? And when you believe right, see, when you but whatever you're willing to believe, man, will begin to that's what you will experience in life. If you don't believe that his blood sanctifies you, if you don't believe that, then guess what would happen? You'll try to do it yourself. You'll try to you'll try to do what all you can to make yourself right before God, and you'll never get there. You'll never get you always find yourself stumbling at some point in life. And how much is enough? How clean do you need to be in your own effort to come before God? I tell you how clean you need to be clean enough by the blood of Jesus to come before him because it's his blood that immediately positions us in holiness. And it's not us earning holiness. It's his blood that makes us holy. Amen. Somebody say his blood makes me holy. 
the sanctification process, the sanctification of Jesus' blood makes us holy before God. That means that we are day one, the day you receive Christ, the day he moved in and his blood washed you is the day you're ready to be used by God. Listen, the world's going to tell you that this is not, this is not true. Listen, man, you, you've been out there for how long? <laughs> you've been doing what for how long? There is no way that God's going to take you immediately and say, you, you tell us that he's ready to use you, go preach the gospel somewhere around the world. And they're going to reject you. And they're going to tell you, 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 you know, get some help, you know, get some help. Make sure you, you know, we're glad you found Jesus, but man, get some help because it doesn't sound like God's going to use you initially. Yeah, you got to be under somebody. You got to do this. You got to get here. You got to make sure you're, you're in a church for 10, 15 years and then God will start using you on the outside. No, he won't, he is ready to use you right now. Praise God. He is ready to begin uh, 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 using, using your life day one, the day you receive Christ in his blood. The day you receive it, man, you're washed. Somebody say, I'm washed by his blood. Let's look at John 13. John chapter 13, uh, verse 2 through 8. John chapter 13, verse 2 through 8. Praise God. It's his blood that has sanctified us. Praise God. We are holy. We are holy. John chapter 13, verse 2. And, and supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter. Check this out. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Now, Peter was trying to be deep. Peter was trying to, no, I'm not going to let the Lord wash my feet. This is the Lord. I need to be washing his feet. I mean, you know, there's nothing that we can do for Jesus, but he is willing to do everything for us. Praise God. He has done everything for us. And it says, and Jesus answered him. If I do not wash you, check this out. If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. So Jesus is telling us, he's painting this picture of something that they don't yet understand about sanctification. Jesus said, if I'm not sanctifying you, if I'm not washing you, then I there's nothing that I don't have any part of you. I don't have any part of you. So listen, I believe that Jesus, Jesus takes sinners, takes us when we're unclean and but check this out. He takes us only because the blood washes us and makes us holy. He's not taking you in your sin nature and saying, okay, go in your sin nature and go do this. And you're still, you don't have the new creation. No, he take, he calls us where in the state that we are, the brokenness that we are. And he says, it's his blood that comes in and washes us. So God sees you as perfect. He sees you as flawless. He doesn't see you as who you used to be. That, that is gone. That person is gone. That nature that produced who you used to be is no longer there. But the blood of Jesus has come in and washed you. And he says, now I can use you. So he's telling Peter, listen, if I'm not washing you, then we don't have, there's nothing else. That, there's nothing that you don't have any part of me. I'm telling you, it's the blood that has sanctified you. It's the blood that makes you holy. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus that has made you holy. Praise God. You are sanctified by his blood. Let's look at, I'm going to go back really quick to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It's, it's his blood that sanctifies us. And while he didn't, I want, this is going to be something that we'll, we'll touch on a little later, but I want to, I really want to paint this picture of sanctification because um, you may have not thought that, you know, he, he sanctifies us for salvation, 
But then all these other areas in my life is my responsibility, such as changing my mindset and, and doing all these other things. And while please understand, it is necessary that you have a new mindset, but I will need you to understand where that new mindset comes in. Listen, you, when, when he washed us, he didn't just wash uh, our spirit man, but he washed our body and our soul, which is our mind, our will, and emotion. He washed all of it. But remember what I said to you before. Whatever you don't believe, you won't experience. If you don't believe that he's washed your spirit, soul, and body, then you won't believe that, that, that your body is ready. Listen, he washed the body so he could have a body to use. Praise God. He, he gave us a new mindset so that we can understand the things of the spirit. Let's, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Man, I know this is, this is, you know, it may not be challenging for some of you that may have heard uh, me minister on something similar to this. But I know that, that his blood has washed us completely and his blood is enough. And so now it's up to me to believe what the blood has accomplished. First Thessalonians 5, 23. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Somebody say, I'm sanctified completely. He says, and may your whole spirit and soul, whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God himself through Jesus Christ, his blood has sanctified us completely. Completely spirit, soul, body. He's why he made us, he's given us a new nature. Praise God, he given us a new nature. He sanctified us. A soul. He has washed us the old residue of, of who we used to be. Praise God. And when we believe that man, I'm telling you, it's powerful what happens. You no longer remember the, some of the things you used to do. And you're not trying to lie. You're not trying to be fake about it. But you genuinely don't remember, recall some of the things that you used to do and who you used to be. I'm telling you, it happens. Praise God. Somebody said, that can't happen. You, you, you're lying and trying to act like it never happened. No, I'm telling you, when you believe what has happened, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, His blood washes away the residue. He's washed away. He's given us, he's washed us, spirit, our spirit, our soul, and our bodies, praise God. So therefore, we are prepared for God's use. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Did you all receive anything from the word tonight? Man, let's give God praise this evening. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the blood, Lord. It's the blood that has that, that has washed us. And knows, so, Lord, we lift our hands in thanksgiving for the blood of Jesus. Tonight, Father, we thank you that that blood is uh, uh, available to anybody that's on the broadcast tonight and receiving tonight and they're ready to receive and to walk with you, Father. We thank you that the blood of Jesus is for them as well, Father. We thank you for it. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all those agreed said, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. If you're here today and you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I just want you to just repeat this prayer after me, man. This is one of the most powerful decisions that you're going to make. Praise God. And that's receiving Christ, man, and letting his blood go to work. Glory to God. And so he can wash you and make you ready. Amen. Praise God. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. And today I turn to you. I believe that you are the son of God and that you have died on the cross and shed your blood on the cross for my past, present, and future sins. I, this day, I invite you in to be my savior, to live with me and to lead me and to guide me uh, in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. If you said that prayer, that is one invitation that Jesus will not turn down. Man, he is moved. You said that and you believe that Jesus shed his blood for you. Praise God. He is moved in. He is now a resident on the inside of you and his blood is already at work changing you from the inside out, man. And we just celebrate with you. We thank God for your life. If you said that prayer, we have prayer counselors that are in place that are ready to minister to you and give you a biblical understanding of really what you just received. And so please contact us here at the ministry. The information is on the screen for you to contact us. Uh, and so we're just excited for your life. And we believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. For your life. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's prosperity time. It's time to give. 
Amen. And we are giving not to get. We are not giving to try to uh, please God. Amen. He is pleased with you already. So we're, what are we giving for? We're giving out of response, man. We're so thankful, man. I'm so thankful for the blood. Anything that I have belongs to him. My home belongs to him. Praise God. My family belongs to him. I'm just being a steward over who, what he's put into my hands, man. But it all belongs to him. All resources, our lives, man, whatever he wants out of our lives, it all belongs to him, man. So why not express that in our giving? Amen. And so you can do that tonight. Follow the text to give information that's on the screen. Just express your thanksgiving. Express your thank, your gratitude for what the blood has already accomplished. Amen. And so I let that, I let that leave you. Let the Spirit of God, you may not hear from the Spirit of God. You may not have heard his voice before, man. But when you when you understand what giving is about, it's not about getting from God. It's not about what can I do to be blessed, man. It's about what has he already done for me. Man, I'm just giving out of thanksgiving. And so follow the text to give information on the screen. We're going to go ahead and pray over the offering there. Father, we thank you for the seeds that have been sown. Lord, the harvest time is now. <laughs> I thank you that they're already, they've been reaping harvest all year long, Father, from what they've been sowing and because they believe right and, and they're so grateful for what you've already done. Lord, I thank you that it is well with them and their household. We thank you that the, the seed is multiplying even as we speak, Father, and we give you praise for it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all those agree said, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, man, thank you all so much for joining us here tonight. Don't forget to tune in uh, every day, Monday through Friday for Grace Minute. Praise God. As I said, I'm, I'll probably join you all for a few, about 15 to 20 minutes on Christmas morning just to share a little word that's on my heart for, with you, man, as we celebrate the birth, man, as we celebrate the birth of our King. Glory to God. And so we're so grateful. Look forward to seeing you all on Grace Minute. Uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. God bless you guys. We love you so much. Uh, remember, it is well with you in your household. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. God bless you. Have a good night.